on the uh, weapon side, uh, we regarded uh, it as a race uh, with uh, Adolf Hitler uh, and and his German uh, scientists. So there there were no uh, uh, second thoughts about it, no qualms at all. I know of no scientist who who felt that uh, we shouldn't do this and let Adolf Hitler uh, beat us. Not a single one at that time. We all felt that this was a matter of life and death and uh, that we had to give all of our effort. I had many meetings with leading uh, scientists like Eugene Wigner and so forth who would come over and tell me, uh, say, Glenn, we might as well admit it, we're losing the race. Uh, we're not going to get there in time. This only, of course, uh, of course uh, spurred us uh, to, uh, to greater effort. But then in, lurking in the background was the uh, uh, goal that here we also had an almost limitless source of energy uh, for use in uh, uh, electricity producing uh, uh, reactors. And uh, uh, that uh, was something, however, that uh, it developed after the war. It is probably not generally known, but in the power reactors that produce electricity in the United States today, about 40% of the energy, which comes from the fission, is from plutonium, and about 60% from the U-235. See, they use the enriched U-235, enriched from its uh, concentration in natural uranium, to run the reaction, but then the rest of it is U-238, which, like in the production, uh, like the reactor in Hanford, produced plutonium by capturing a neutron to form plutonium. That same thing happens in power reactors. And while you're uh, producing energy by the fission of U-235, you're producing plutonium-239, which in turn is a nuclear fuel and uh, adds to the uh, nuclear fuel that keeps the reactor going. And in the course of the lifetime, of a fuel cycle, 40% of the energy is produced by plutonium-239, which is a source of satisfaction to me, of course.